Hello, friends, and welcome to the Citizens of Dogman NFL Podcast. I'm Robert Harding here with the one, the only, Justin Ritzel. Robert, good to be talking football with you. Yeah, it's that time of year. Yeah, I mean, uh, the weather certainly feels like it. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, I was it's funny, I was walking outside Tuesday here in central New York, and I'm like, my gosh, this is like September, early October weather. It was... It was quite strange. Um, so used to this time of year, just like dreading like the two second walk to work from the car to the office where it's like <laughs> 95 degrees and, you know, just build up a sweat in that time. And the past couple of days, it's been pretty cool. So I'm kind of waiting for the leaves to start uh, changing color and yeah, get some pigs going. Yeah, yeah. Bill's training camp starts uh, Thursday. I actually had tickets to go. I can't go due to uh, some work obligations, so that stinks, but I'm sure I'll make it out for one of the early morning 845 sessions uh, at some point, so we'll see. Yeah, I haven't been there in a couple of years. Kind of, I went there uh, went there for Sammy Watkins' uh, mm-hmm. rookie, rookie training camp there, and, you know, when all the hype was about him making all these flashy plays, and right. he was really, like, the only player that I was concerned with watching, because... I'm I'm not a Bills fan, uh, and he he delivered, and then he went and did all Sammy Watkins getting hurt, and <laughs> right? Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's gonna be gonna be an interesting training camp for sure, which uh, is a good segue, I think, uh, to the prime topic we wanted to talk about, which is the Buffalo Bills and uh, the upcoming training camp. Uh, Ritz prepared a very nice outline for our conversation today. Uh, leading off with key players to watch. Uh, who's uh, who's on your, that list for you? So I think what's going to be interesting to watch about the Bills as a whole this year is that their defense obviously has take, taken a step back mm-hmm. the past couple of years with Rex Ryan um, compared to where it was uh, a couple of years ago when they finished 9-7. and seven. Mm-hmm. Um, you know they were top top five defense. They were one of the best pass rushing teams in the NFL. Rex comes in and that all kind of goes by the wayside. Uh, I don't think that was necessarily all Rex Ryan's fault, mm-hmm. which is why some of the guys that I'm looking forward to seeing at full strength from the get go for the Bills are their top two picks from last year. So Shaq Lawson and Reggie Ragland. Um, just Lawson obviously was a top top pick, but in a Sean McDermott defense you saw with Carolina, the inside linebacker position is like critical. Oh yeah. It's huge. Luke Keekley, Thomas Davis, those guys were all pro players. Um so I think it'll be fun to watch watch Ragland because he was a he was supposed to be a first round pick too, come out of Alabama and the Bills you know, the Bills ended up picking him up in the second round, I think. So, mm-hmm. And then their first round pick from this year, uh, Tredavious. Yes. Uh, he's stepping in. He's, I'd imagine, going to start right away because they, <laughs> they have quite a void there at cornerback So, uh, with Gilmore gone. So uh, he's another guy that I think uh, they're looking forward to seeing this training camp. Um, so you've got some guys written down. Who, uh, who are you looking for? key players to watch. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, you mentioned Tredavious, uh, Tredavious White. Uh, I think the secondary as a whole is is just a, a unit to watch, really, because uh, that's been, at least under Rex's tenure, and certainly now that McDermott's taken it on, I mean, it, it's one of the biggest, biggest holes in the defense, really. Not only do they... You know, not only have they had a depth problem there, but an injury problem. Uh, Aaron Williams comes to mind as a guy last year, uh, and even the year before, you know, had battled some injuries. Uh, so this year, that you know, they come in, you know, you have Ronald Darby, arguably your number one corner right now. Uh, Tredavious White, who, you know, uh, I guess showed 
a lot of good things uh, during minicamp and stuff. So that's that's encouraging. We'll see if that that carries over, uh, and hopefully, knock on wood, he stays healthy. Uh, the question is, you know, the safety spots. They pick up uh, your boy Micah Hyde. Uh, we'll see what what uh, uh, what that does for him. You know, they've tried to shore up that position. They just signed Bakari Rambo, a former Bill, uh, within the last couple days. Aaron Rodgers killer Bakari Rambo. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, we'll see what happens with that. Uh, also, you know, interested in the you know the wide receiving core as a whole too, uh, uh, and Sammy Watkins. You know it. We know what he's capable of. The question is, is he healthy? You know, we'll we'll see if that's true in camp. And also the development of uh, Zay Jones. You know, they they drafted him. You know, pretty high. They they moved up in the second round to get him. Is he a number two now? Is he a number three? You know, who fills the number two if he can't? All of these are, are big questions entering camp. Um, I want to talk about Sammy some more in a minute, but I want to get your thoughts a little more on just bringing in Micah Hyden from somebody who maybe necessarily hasn't hasn't watched the Packers <laughs> as much <laughs> as I have. What what did you think of the signings? I think we talked a little bit about it when it happened, and, yeah. Uh, but just now that you know the season's right here, kind of refresh me on what you thought about that signing. Yeah, I mean, I, look, do I think Micah Hyde's a top-tier safety in the NFL? No. Uh, do I think he brings a good veteran presence to the Bills and, you know, is certainly an upgrade over what they had? Absolutely. Um, you know, it, it remains to be seen, though, like what, okay, you're operating in uh, McDermott's defense. Uh, how, what kind of fit are you going to be and how good of a player are you going to be? Uh, so that's that's really that's really kind of where I'm at with him. You know, I, you know, he's got a track record. That's that's good and bad. Uh, you know, obviously he, you know, he's done some good things over the years, and he's done some bad things. He has some you know flaws in his game, uh, but I, I think he can be a, a solid contributor for them. I think what's what's nice about Hyde is that, um, you know, because he came in, he was drafted as a cornerback. Mm-hmm. That's where he played it in college. Uh, past couple of years, the Packers kind of shifted him to more of like a safety role, or more like a, like a Swiss Army knife almost. Yeah. So he'd play a little safety, and then he could come down and he could play the slot slot corner. Um, the Packers already had the <laughs> one of the worst secondaries by year's end last year. Mm-hmm. Um, he was like a saving grace for them. He's not super athletic. He's a little slow. So, like, there's going to be times this year if you're a Bills fan where you're just going to see him get torched and you're just going to, you know, throw your throw your hands up like, who, who the hell is this guy? <laughs> um, but he can, he, you know, he can turn the ball over a little bit. And, um, you know, he is a he is a veteran and he's, he's smart. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, you can – are smart players going to win you Super Bowls? No. But, you know – you don't want to turn them away either. You, you like having smart guys in the field. So uh, from a Packers perspective, I, I was, you know, for the money the Bills gave him, I was kind of glad they, they let him go. But is it a bad signing? No, he should help them. And, yeah. you know, the Bills need help. So Yeah. You don't um, have to tell me that. <laughs> so one thing I, I was curious about from, from a Bills fan's perspective, because I have, as an outsider, mm-hmm. I have my opinions, but – you know, we're entering uh, Sammy Watkins, is it his fourth year? Fourth year, yeah. Um, the Bills, they declined his fifth-year option. Right. Uh, that says a lot mm-hmm. for a guy who was picked as high as he was that they don't want to bring him back um, on his rookie deal. How do you view Sammy's you know, time as, as a Bills player so far? Is he is he a disappointment? Um are you still kind of holding that hope he's going to live up to that hype, or, you know, are you taking everything into consideration? Are are you kind of happy with what he's done? Yeah, i I think it I think it really comes down to for him is health. You know, the his his big problem has been uh, not only staying on the field, but when he's been on the field, is he at a hundred percent or even close to a hundred percent? You know, the when he his rookie year, you know, he had a rib issue, and that clearly affected him. Uh, you know, when he's healthy, 
uh, or even close to being 100% healthy, he's, he's a, a great wide receiver. Uh, the issue is that he just can't seem to consistently stay healthy. Uh, and, you know, look, this is the NFL. Players play through pain all the time. They play through injuries. Some are better at it than others. Um, I think what magnifies it for Bills fans is the fact that, you know, that's still fresh in our minds that, you know, Doug Whaley gave up, uh, gave up a, a, the next year's first rounder to move up and take this guy in a wide receiver deep year. And, you know, you see that Odell Beckham, who went behind, he went to the Giants after the Bills' original slot. The Bills were drafting at nine that year. Uh, Beckham fell to, I think, 11 or 12. You know, he's a he's kind of the, you know, universal example of what were the Bills thinking by moving up just to take Watkins. I mean, the jury's still out on him is the thing. You know, he's had a, a, a bumpy road, but... When he's on the field and, you know, he has a good quarterback throwing his way, um, you know, him and Tyrod Taylor have had a good connection, you know, when when Watkins can stay on the field. Uh, I think back to the Dolphins game last year. They both had big games in that game. So uh, I think this year will be a big test for him, uh, not only for his Bills future, but just his future in general. Because let's say he has a mediocre year. Did the Bills bring him back in 2018? I think not. And, uh, you know, okay, then what team is going to want to, you know, invest in him? Because he'll probably say, oh, well, I'm a fourth, you know, overall pick. I deserve, you know, pretty decent payday here. And look, I this is my resume. I can, you know, I can do some things. And it's free agency. So Yeah, he is, you know, whether it's for the Bills or somebody else, it is effectively, it's a contract year, so... Yeah. You know he's um, he's playing for he's playing for money right now. I'm like, yeah. uh, I I think it is it is a little unfair. You you brought up obviously how stacked that wide receiver draft was. Like uh, Mike Evans, mm-hmm. obviously Odell, uh, even guys that were taken in the second round, like uh, Allen Robinson from the Jaguars, oh, yeah. is, you yeah. know a number one receiver. Uh, Devonte Adams in Green Bay yeah. had 12 touchdowns last year, so that was, you know, I, I think part of the problem in hindsight looking at that is that is that the draft was so stacked at the position. Uh, I don't, I mean, there was no doubt at the time, like oh, it was, Watkins is the best receiver in this draft. You know, yeah. he's he has the potential to be a legitimate game changer at that position. Um, but you know, I'm and I'm a Tyrod defender, but you know. Even Eli Manning, who I'm not the biggest fan of, I'd rather have throwing to me than than Tyrod. Um, so it's kind of circumstance too. Obviously, you mentioned his injuries and the fact that he's kind of the one, two, three guy in Buffalo because the depth at that position has been so bad. Um, but yeah, it'll be an interesting year for him. And I like Sammy Watkins. I liked him when he, you know, when he first got drafted, and I, I hope he does well. And yeah. he's like the only, you know, aside from LaShawn McCoy, he's really the only player on the Bills who has like star power. Right. Yeah. And I that's think true. that's that's important for you know a team that's constantly trying to be recognized in the NFL. So we'll see. Um, the other thing I want to talk about, we'll stick with the wide receivers, is these rumors of Anquan Bolden potentially joining yeah. the Bills. Would you like? The signing if they decided to bring him in? I I would, uh, mainly because of what the current crop of wide receivers is. I mean, they, they brought in a lot of, you know, these, these free agents that you know are, you know, these guys aren't your number one, number two material guys. I mean, the closest one might be Andre Holmes, just because when he was in Oakland, you know, he, he got some limited uh, targets, but look who he was on the roster with. I mean, we're talking to Mari Cooper, Michael Crabtree later on. I mean, and, and then before Derek Carr got in there, he didn't exactly have the best players thrown his way. Uh, so, you know, I, he's a guy that would be interesting to watch. But the rest of them are mostly unproven guys, guys who might come in for a shot at, uh, you know, fifth or sixth spot. So, you know, with Bolden, you got a guy who could come in, 
be a number two, number three, depending on uh, you know what Zay Jones' status is, and contribute inside. You know, you, you've got uh, Charles Clay still at tight end, who you're paying a lot of money. They've been disappointed with his performance, but you know, with it with Bolden, you kind of open things up over the middle, which could make Clay look a little better. So. Well, he is like at this stage of his career. You know, just watching him, you know, he had a couple good years with the Ravens there. He won a Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. Um, he was with the Lions last year. He's almost been like another tight end because he's yeah. he's so he's so damn slow right. and old, but smart, and mm-hmm. he just works the middle of the field so great. And he's just one of those annoying guys who um, just kind of finds his way to getting those first downs and keeping the chains moving. Uh, he's not going to... You know, catch fifty yard bombs or help them on the outside, but it's kind of, it's kind of you know I look at it the same way on the defensive side with Hyde is that when you're bringing in a veteran player who's experienced at you know as long as you're not overpaying them ridiculously, um, why not? Yeah. Especially at at this stage of of the game when you're a day before training camp, you know if he wants to get on a roster, he's going to come cheap. So yeah. Uh, so I think what's interesting about training camp this year, they changed how, how the cuts are going to work. Mm-hmm. So instead of, you know, kind of every week, once the preseason games start, teams are required to get down to a certain number. This year, it's all in one foul swoop. So you go from having 90, 100 guys on your on your team to the week up leading up to week one is when you get down to your 53. Um the Patriots have become famous as the team who kind of makes those funky cuts to players right before training camp, or you're like, you know, whether it was, um, you know, they bring in Chad Johnson, they cut him. Right. Um, there's obviously been a couple other guys. Um, they made that weird trade with Tampa a couple years ago where they got rid of one of their established offensive linemen. His name is escaping me oh, right now. Uh, Logan Mankins. Logan Mankins. Yeah. Um they got rid of him on the eve of the season. Do you think the Bills have any potential surprise players that might get cut? Mm, that's a good question. I I saw this floated out there, and, and it seemed interesting to me, but um, uh, Preston Brown, one of their linebackers, because uh, no one is quite sure how he fits into McDermott's system. Uh, he's not really a guy that you want to put in the middle. I don't think his best position is a, a middle linebacker. I think Ragland uh, will fill that role nicely. Um, but then on the outside, like in a 4-3 scheme, you, on one side you obviously want a pass rusher, and he's not that. And so he could fit in on the other side, But and he's he's athletic enough to do that. But, again... You know, you still want someone on the outside with you know some pass rushing ability, and he just he doesn't really have that, at least from uh, from the outside, from the edge. So, uh, where does he fit in? I mean, you know, he could fit into you know what you were talking about earlier. You know, the the Panthers had you know two guys in the middle, uh, Thomas Davis and Luke Keekley, who you know were very effective. You know, could he fit into that role there? Absolutely possible, but. You know, will, will they be be able to justify its existence that way? So, and you know, he he obviously represents uh, you know someone who's been around a little while. You know, you could trim that salary. Uh, he still might be on his rookie deal. I'm not sure, but um, you know, he's a guy that you cut him loose and you save a little money on the salary cap. And you know, they've already added some linebackers too. So that that that's a possibility. So you mentioned, uh, we've talked about Sean McDermott a little bit already. First training camp as a head coach. Yeah. He has extensive experience as a coordinator, but this is going to be a whole new kind of ball game for him. Uh, what are your initial thoughts on, on McDermott so far from what you've seen? I, I read a uh, Great Buffalo News story uh, about him, and... It, it kind of answered one of my questions. Uh, you know, I I like to go to training camp, and I really like the night practices. And it, this wasn't just like a Rex Ryan thing. I mean, this has been going on for years, and they, they really hype these. 
Well, under McDermott, when the tr- when the camp schedule came out, there's a, there's only I think the first practice is an evening practice, and then they're doing one at uh, New Era Field in Orchard Park, but that's it. Most of the practices are at 8.45 in the morning. Not exactly the most fan-friendly time in the world, but for the team, that's why. And, you know, he kind of explained that, saying, you know, that it brings a... He picked it up from his years with Andy Reid and Ron Rivera. You know, they prefer to do, you know, the morning sessions like that because then you have the rest of the day. You have the rest of the day to spend together as a team and to you know, kind of re- rehab and, you know, if you're a little sore, you can ice and just, you know, spend it, you know, a little bit outside football, but with your football family, so to speak. And I thought that was uh, definitely different because so much of what we saw, you know, with uh, past coaches, there really wasn't a structure to camp. You know, they'd mix in the night practices, there'd be some mid-morning, maybe some early afternoon, maybe an eight o'clock. Uh, but with this camp it's very different you know there's definitely a structure to it Uh, and I think that just speaks to you know what kind of coach he is he is he going to come in and be this you know full-blown old school disciplinarian I don't think so I think there's part of that in him but I think he he believes that you know you have to be together as a team and there has to be some structure to the way you do things if you're going to be successful um you know I, I liked I like the hiring from the start. I mean, I haven't been following kind of his plans as in depth as I'm sure you have, but you know, it's the hiring coaches is such an inexact science, much like everything else in the NFL. Right. But I would, I would almost every time decide to take, take a coordinator who's been around the league a long time, has gotten that experience and has been successful over a retread. Mm-hmm. who's been an NFL head coach and is probably kind of set in their ways a little bit. Um, is it is it risky bringing in someone who's never been a head coach before? Yeah, but, you know, when the Bills decided to bring in Rex Ryan, I mean, you kind of knew what you were going to get. Right. Um, and I don't know if, you know, I'll take the little more uncertainty if it means, you know, the risk of or the potential of something even better. Yeah, you know, like I'll risk the low if it means that there's a greater potential for something something high. Uh, obviously, Bill Belichick is kind of goes against that because he's a retread coach who ended up he's arguably the greatest of all time. But there's so many like guys in that situation where they've been a coordinator for a long time and they've kind of learned the ropes, and they're not necessarily being thrown into the fire. Um, just you have to go down to. Chris Shearer's buddy, Adam Gase. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, the the Dolphins, a bunch of times, they went and did, they hired retreads. Mm-hmm. Didn't work out for them. Right. Now it looks like the team is finally, you know, not to harp on the Dolphins, because this is, uh, we're talking Bills, but, um, you know, I, I like the hiring. I like what he can do. Um, and if he can get, if he can get the Bills defense anywhere close to, how good the Panthers were a couple years ago when they made their Super Bowl run. Um, not saying the Bills are going to win any Super Bowls, but uh, that'll keep them in every game. Yeah. And so that so last thing I want to touch on with the Bills. Um, earlier this week, the other day, I think it was on Monday, mm. uh, USA Today released their NFL predictions, despite the fact that. Even though training camp is here, so much of these rosters can change. We have no idea who's going to get hurt. Right. You know there are going to be important players on each team that are going to get hurt yeah. and be out for the season. The Ravens have already lost one of their running backs, uh, Kenneth Dixon. Yep. Um, so this is all, you know, we're just obviously shooting dark. We don't know what the hell we're talking about. But I want your thoughts on USA Today's prediction that the Bills will go four and twelve. Um, they gave an explanation on each each team why they predicted the record they did, and their Bills uh, Bills prediction was pretty simple. Uh, quote: New regime, new schemes, tough schedule against the NFC South and AFC West. Mm-hmm. That's true. Um, it is a tough schedule. 
Robert Harden. Putting you on the spot already. Yeah. The first ever Citizens NFL podcast. <laughs> Your early prediction for um, the Bills season record this year. I have them, uh, I think I put this together when the schedule first came out, but I have them going 7-9. Uh, and nine. and I saw the USA Today uh, prediction. Uh, I mean, I... I could see it playing out that way if everything goes wrong for them. You know, because you have to remember, they play the Jets twice. Those games against the Dolphins last year easily could have gone the Bills' way. They they led late in both of those games. Uh, so, you know, if those go the, the Bills' way, you, you know, you're, you're talking possibly, I mean, they did it a couple years ago. They won, they won those four games. So there's, there's four wins right there. This is obviously, you know, a liberal... Uh, estimate but you know as tough as the NFC South is you know the Saints uh, I believe come to Buffalo the Saints haven't been the greatest you know road team over the years Uh, you know they've they've had a shaky defensive unit certainly they have Drew Brees still so you can't sleep on them entirely Uh, the Panthers are uh, obviously without their defensive coordinator because the Bills have him now. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, that that kind of uh, levels the playing field a bit. He has a familiar familiarity with them. Uh, and, you know, Tampa Bay, uh, as, you know, they're, they're certainly a, a good, young, up-and-coming they're, team. They're a sexy team this year. Yeah. Uh, you know, you got to watch out for them, but at the same time they do have – they they have the they have the ability to put up a stinker too. Um, obviously, the Falcons. I mean, that game in Orchard Park is going to be rough. Uh, actually, it might be in Atlanta. I can't remember which, but either way, it's going to be rough. Um, that team is is built to built to succeed. Another guy who you know Dan Quinn, a coordinator who became a head coach, a success story. So, you know, I I, I think it will be a tough year for them. I think the schedule. You know, without question, is is tough. It's tough for every AFC's team. If you had Sheeran here, he'd say the same thing. You know, he thinks that the Dolphins aren't going to be as good this year because of that. So, we'll see what happens. Um, Keyword: If Sheeran was here, uh, even though he's on vacation, so, <laughs> so sadly he could not join in for the first uh, Citizen NFL podcast. Wow. Hashtag Summer of Sheeran. Yeah, gotta, gotta slip that. Yeah, in. but yeah, I, you know, and, and then. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the AFC West slate, which, you know, is a little bit different. I mean, the Chiefs, uh, you know, there's some uncertainty there with them. They're, you know, they're kind of caught in between this, you know, wanting to get younger while trying to win phase. Uh, So we'll see what happens with them. Um, You know, the Raiders, of course, are the Raiders. The Raiders, you know, look good on paper once again. Uh, The Broncos, you know, quarterback questions again. Who knows what will happen with that? And the Chargers, you know, the Chargers, you know, have some good pieces there. You can't sleep on them, even though they, they had a terrible 2016. So I think saying that the Bills, you know, will go 4-12, and 12, I think that's a worst case. Uh, they'll probably do their usual 7-9, and 8-8. Eight and eight. Um, That's where I see them falling this year. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, you touched, you touched on AFC West, which I think – Many would say top to bottom is the best division in football. That FC, NFC South, you take those four quarterbacks, um, combined with the fact that obviously the Bills have to play Tom Brady twice, mm-hmm. their defense is going to be tested. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we talked about, you know, or talked about how their defense is, they have a lot of players that I'm going to be looking forward to seeing this year. Um, they have the potential to be good, they're also going to get tested this year. So I really think it comes down to how McDermott's defense does year one. Because if, if they can prevent some of these quarterbacks like Breeze, like Matt Ryan, from going up and down the field on them and keep the Bills in the game, they could steal some of these games. Yeah. So we'll see. Um, bring up, you know, we'll switch more towards an NFL scope here. Yeah. Um, brought up the AFC West. And I want to talk about teams that may surprise you this year. Teams that maybe the general public has a certain opinion of that 
you may feel more positive or more negative. I have one from the AFC West that I think, and I, th- I told this to Shira a couple weeks ago, pretty bold prediction, but I want to hear some surprise teams uh, for you this year, Robert. Uh, one, one I think worth watching in the AFC is the Tennessee Titans. Uh, this is a team that's uh, younger. They've uh, been slowly kind of putting all the pieces together. They they were definitely in some games last year. They they kind of you know especially in that division too, you know not necessarily the most uh, strong you know not necessarily the strongest division uh, in football. You know uh, you've got the Colts that you know despite having Andrew Luck seem to find you know ways to lose games. You know the Texans have a solid defense, but questions on offense with the quarterback especially. Uh, so here you have the Titans, a good young team, you know, steady at quarterback as long as Mariota is healthy, uh, you know, an underrated defense too. That's a team that I think could surprise some people this year, especially if they come out on the 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 other end of some of those games that they they may have lost in the last you know seconds last year. Uh, uh, you know, they could sneak in there. You know that that division nine seven ten and six. Not crazy to think that they could that could, they could sneak in. Harding, you got the division right. <laughs> you got the team wrong. I like I like the Titans. Okay, uh, I like Mariota. Um, I like their receivers. Bringing in Eric Decker, if mm-hmm. he can somehow stay healthy, he's a nice veteran guy there. Um, obviously, they spent their first round pick on wide receiver, uh, and I like Mariota. Um, I think the Jags. Mm. Not saying they're going to win the division. Interesting. But the Coughlin influence. <laughs> that defense is going to be really, really tough. Yeah. Um, they weren't. They weren't bad last year, but when your offense literally cannot do anything, thanks yep. to Blake Bortles, you're going to play on. You're, you're going to be on the field a lot. But um, Jalen Ramsey's a very good corner. They added some pieces. A.J. Boye from the Texans, who was one of the top corners last year. I think he made the Pro Bowl. Uh, Clayus Campbell from the Cardinals. Yeah. Uh, they've spent they've spent a lot of money on that side of the ball. Um, they have two very good receivers. They now have, you know, we'll see what we get from Leonard Fournette. He could potentially be a dynamite yeah. running back. They have all the pieces except for the main piece, which... You know, Blake Bortles, you know, everybody kind of throws up in their mouth a little bit talking about him. Yeah. Uh, but I do think, uh, you know, kind of similarly to the Bills, if they if that defense can be be good, and I think they can be very, very good, uh, they're, they're going to be in games too. And um, as you mentioned, the division is pretty whack. Yeah. So who knows? Really, if you think about it, any of those four teams can win the division. And any of those teams in the division could finish four and twelve. Yeah. Um, did you have any other teams? Uh, Tampa Bay. You know, we. I don't think. Uh, uh, I don't think they got enough credit last year for how much they. You know, they they advanced. Uh, uh, and I think that division, just given how that team has developed, uh, you know, on both sides of the ball, really. Uh, I think they could be a legitimate threat in the AFC or NFC South. Uh, you know, the Falcons, you know, how do they rebound from that, uh, that uh, uh, you know, heartbreaking loss, shall we say, in the Super Bowl? Uh, you know, I think, the, I think they'll still be a very good team. Uh, but, you know, Tampa Bay could definitely challenge them for the division and, you know, at worst, you know, finish with a wild card. Um, I, think they're, I think they're that good heading into 2017. So I listed one team that I think is going to surprise people in a good way, two teams who are going to surprise some people in a bad way. Um, I think the Chargers are going to win the AFC West. Wow. Really? Yeah. Over the Raiders? Over the Raiders. And I like the Raiders. I think the Raiders are going to make the playoffs too. Um, is it because of the Raiders' defense that you uh, that you feel that way? It's because of the Chargers' defense. Because... Mm. Um, well, first off, you can't talk about the Chargers in 2016 without mentioning how beat up that roster was. Yeah. Like, just totally decimated with injuries. Keenan Allen went they, down. They lost Keenan Allen right away. Their top corner, Verrett, he right. got hurt. Um, just incredibly unlucky. 
So while you could say, well, this seems to happen every year with the Chargers, they have guys get hurt, maybe they're just injury prone. Um, I think the law of averages suggests they're going to be a little more fortunate in that area this year. But their pass rushing tandem of Bosa and Melvin Ingram oh, yeah. is dynamite. Yeah. That I put them up against anybody in the league. And, you know, I think uh, they have solid receivers, especially if Keenan Allen comes back. Melvin Gordon had a really nice year last year. And Phil Rivers, he might be, like, the most underrated, underappreciated quarterback of, like, this generation. Yeah. So, um, I'm not going to guarantee it, but they are they are my pick. And uh, I told Shear this right in his face, and he wrote it down and made a note of it. So, I don't know if we're going <laughs> to... We're going to make a bet on it or not, but we'll see. He was shocked. That's hilarious. So he was like, whoa, the Chargers. Yeah. Yeah, I know Chris can get flared up from time to time, but. Yeah. Um, well, especially so, when he's fresh off of vacation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe I'll remind him when he gets back <laughs> next week, like, hey, Chris, I took the Chargers to win that division, you know. Oh, yeah. Oh, we'll have to bet a cup of coffee on it. Um, so that's my positive team. Two negative teams that were NFC powers last year that I think are going to surprise some people negatively. Uh, First one is Atlanta. Mm. I still think they're going to be, um, they're going to be a very solid team. One of the best in the NFC. However, there's a, there's kind of a history of these teams that are historically good offensively, that it is almost impossible to replicate the next season. Right. You look at, um, a couple years ago, the 2013 Broncos, Peyton Manning breaks the NFL passing touchdown record for a single season. He comes back the next year, and they were still a solid offense, but you know, historically good, not even close. The 2011 Packers, Aaron Rodgers uh, has the highest passer rating in NFL history, one of the best offenses ever. Uh, they come back, again, solid offense, you know, top 10. Not historically great. Mm-hmm. 2007 Patriots uh, kind of throw an asterisk next to them because Brady tears up his knee the next year. Right. So whatever. Um, and then the 2004 Colts, Manning breaks what was the touchdown record. Um, same thing. They kind of come back down to earth the next year. It's just so damn hard to be that good offensively again. Yeah. Now that teams have had... Uh, They've had a summer to kind of look at you, and there's some transition with, you know, their coaching staff. Obviously, Kyle Shanahan left to go to San Francisco to be their head coach. They're bringing in Steve Sarkeesian, who, you know, who knows? Mm-hmm. He's not exactly an NFL experienced head coach. So, and and plus, you know, how how can we be sure that Matt Ryan can replicate? You know, I, like. He had a career year, obviously, last year, won the MVP. Um, But you're still taking a guy who was kind of middling in the 90 passer rating his entire career. You know, he threw double-digit interceptions every year of his career, was kind of in that 25 to 30 touchdown range. Um, I think we're going to see a little more of that Matt Ryan this year than the one who had one of the best quarterbacking seasons ever. Yeah. Now, what's going to save the Falcons is that their defense is super physical, uh, super athletic, and, you know, really, they showed they're one of the best in the league the second half of last year. So, I like the defense. I think the offense is going to take a step back, but just assuming that they're going to light up the scoreboard again, um, I think is silly. The other team, which we can kind of segue in, to the next topic I have written down here is how about those damn Dallas Cowboys? Yeah. Has any team had a worse offseason than the Dallas Cowboys? Because uh, I, I sure as hell don't think there has been. I call it an unlucky whitehead. <laughs> I mean, that's that's a whole other thing, but you're talking yeah. about a team who's, whose best player has just been in the news for all the wrong reasons. Yeah. Like, Ezekiel Elliott might get suspended for the first couple games. Yeah. So, and then, you know, on top of that, it's kind of the same thing with the Falcons. The chances of the Cowboys replicating what they did last year between Dak Prescott basically having a flawless season, 
Um, and then Zeke leading the league in rushing. Uh, their offensive line lost a piece or two from what it was last year. Um, who knows how that's going to affect them. And then their defense, which was already kind of crappy, is has a total makeover in their secondary. So people are going to be able to move the ball on them. So the, Cow- the Cowboys are my other team that are going to take a step back this year. And wouldn't shock me if they didn't make the playoffs. Yeah, yeah. Well, the and the NFCs too. I mean, that's that's one thing about the Cowboys. I mean, last year they, you know, without question, one of the one of the best teams in the league, and they really created some distance, uh, you know, between themselves and their their NFC East rivals. But uh, I think this year that's that's going to be a little different. Uh, you know, the Giants uh, on paper look like a better team. Uh, you know, Washington, of course. You know. They're they're in the conversation, and who knows what the Eagles will do? Um, you know they they're trying to kind of piece together things, but they have Carson Wentz and you know some good good pieces. There, really, so. really good defense in Philadelphia. Yeah, led by a uh, old friend, old friend Jim Schwartz. Yeah, yeah. So you know that's that's another thing that kind of works against them is uh, you know six games a year against those teams, and uh, every game's a, a dogfight. So. Um, you know, maybe some of those games uh, don't go their way this year. Entirely possible. Plus, as you mentioned, you know everything that's that's gone on with them. Uh, especially, you know, where where will Ezekiel Elliott? <laughs> how many games is he going to play this year? You know, is he going to be missing for two, four? You know, none. Will he play the whole year? Uh, no one really seems to know yet. We'll we'll see how that transpires. But uh, a lot of questions about them. I mean, they have good pieces there. Still have that offensive line. You know, as long as Elliott's in the game, you know, they can run the ball pretty well. And and if Dak plays like he did last year, you know, this team is definitely one of the contenders in the NFC. But I just think they're going to come back down to earth this year. And, uh, you know, I hate to play into the, you know, sophomore slump talk, but you've got two guys who are candidates for it, and they just happen to be two of your best offensive players. So we'll see. All right. So last thing I want to talk about before we wrap the initial or inaugural Citizen NFL podcast. Uh, we touched on it before, USA, Today, USA Today's prediction of each team, what their record's going to be. Um, they predicted the New England Patriots are going to go 16-0 and again. <laughs> Robert Harding, is there any chance in hell the New England Patriots become the first team in NFL history to go undefeated in the regular season twice? I, I don't see it happening. I, th- I think... Look, I think they're going to win the AFC East again. Uh, I think there's a good possibility just how the AFC looks. Uh, it's almost like the Eastern Conference in the in the NBA. You know, how how many options do you really have on right. the AFC? Uh, I think they're. If I had to, if I had to pick now without you know really looking at the schedule, uh, they would probably be my favorite coming out of the AFC. That said, you know, I think there's some games on their schedule that, you know, uh, they could easily lose. I mean, look at last year. They, you know, a lot of people looked at that Seahawks-Patriots game at Foxborough and said, oh, you know, that tough game for the Patriots, but they'll probably win that. It's home game, prime time, whatever. They lost. So, you know, uh, and that was even with the Seahawks kind of playing up and down, and it, it proved to be a, a nice bounce back win for them. But, um I think the Patriots will win somewhere in the 12, 13, 14 win uh, area. Uh, 16 and 0 again. It's so tough, uh, especially in this league. You know they they are going to be playing some you know good teams, uh, especially on the NFC side again. So uh, I just don't see it happening. Yeah, I think back to uh, a couple years ago in 2015. They were kind of threatening. You know they went went nine or ten games without losing. And they played, they played the Broncos, and they lost in overtime, so that mm-hmm. snapped it. And then the next week, they laid a complete egg against Chip Kelly's Eagles, who were like the disaster of the NFL that year. So it just goes to show that like any team can lose to any team. Yeah. Um, now, do I think the, the Patriots, I mean, I don't have their schedule in front of me, but do I think they're going to lose to the Browns this year? Uh, no. But, you know, all it takes is one game where you're just, you're not quite on. And... Don't forget, people, Tom Brady's 40 years old. Mm-hmm. 
there's no there's no precedent of you know in recent memory of a guy who's that old playing as well as you know he even did last year. Yeah. You know, like who's who's the most recent old guy to have like a great season? Probably talking Brett Favre in two thousand nine. Yeah. Uh, but then he, you know, clock came for you know clock struck midnight for Favre and he was terrible as last year and he retired. So um, I think just booking in Tom Brady as much as they've added, like they had Brandon Cooks. Um, and they had, you know, obviously on defense they added your boys uh, Gilmore. Yeah. To help out them, but just booking them for sixteen and zero. I mean especially when they have to play the Dolphins twice who, you know, Dolphins have given them a little trouble over the years. So who knows, but I agree with uh, Julian Edelman who said himself, this is stupid to talk about. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I agree with you. I think they'll be in that 12 to 14 win range and obviously the favorite in the AFC, but undefeated, I don't think so. Yeah. I mean, the the, the other thing too is that you know their their defense has undergone you know some changes. I mean, obviously they're bringing in Gilmore, uh, who I think you know is a good cornerback, but you know there there are some opportunities to beat him on the outside. Well, yeah, and that's kind that's kind of like the so, thing with just handing them the Super Bowl. It's like right. you know, okay, they they won last year without Gronkowski, obviously, and then they acquired Gilmore and Cooks this year. Um, had the Houston Texans had competent quarterbacking and last year played the Patriots in the second round, they could have won that game. Yeah, and you know that. I mean, the score doesn't necessarily reflect it, but they were giving Brady all sorts of trouble. Um, and you know, if if Ben Roethlisberger doesn't decide to retire midway through the season because uh, there's rumblings of him not wanting to come back this year, they get Martavis Bryant back, the Steelers. And also, Le'Veon Bell got hurt in, like, the first couple minutes of that AFC championship last year. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, yeah, they won last year without Gronkowski, without some other guys. Uh, they also had a little bit of luck along the way. Mm-hmm. So, who knows? Yeah, yeah, it'll be uh, it'll be a fun year. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, it's uh, it's going to be interesting, especially in the NFC. I think it's wide open. Uh you know your your pack uh, could could yeah. be a contender. We'll see what happens. Or they could you know slump midway through the season like they do every year and <laughs> not get home field. And then Rodgers just chucks hail marys for the rest of the season and yeah. voila. I, you know I'm I'm hoping that they make some of these games a little less interesting so he doesn't have to throw hail marys. That'd be nice. How about you you guys just beat some of these teams by two touchdowns and yeah that'd be good. That'd well, be good for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But all right, all right, Robert. So, what do you think? Uh, first, first uh, citizen NFL podcast. Are we gonna, are we gonna come back and do this? Maybe get maybe get Sheer involved. I, I think we should. Yeah, yeah. I think he, uh, I think he has some hot takes to dole out from week to week. Do you think? Do you think with his old age, he can handle doing the Citizen Sports Weekly and an NFL podcast? Ooh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm sure he'll do it though. He might get his agent involved. But, uh, <laughs> I, th- I think he'll do it. I think I, I mean I can't I can't af- you know I can't afford to pay him for this. <laughs> I I think he'll uh any chance to talk about football twice a week I I think he'll take advantage. All right. Uh any closing thoughts? Uh my uh my only thing about this season uh you know at least from the Bills uh, perspective is that uh I think uh I think they have the ability to surprise some people. And that's not me saying that they're going to go out, you know, win 12 games and go to the Super Bowl. Uh, I just think that a lot of people, and I don't know what it is, I mean, their their roster really hasn't changed that much, you know, from, from year to year. I mean, a lot of the same pieces are there from that nine-win team that you mentioned. Uh, but I, uh, I think they have the ability, especially under a new coach, because we don't know, you know, what, what this new coach is going to bring. You know, we don't know what this new defense is going to look like. Um, I think they could surprise some people. I think the uh, you know they have enough talent there, uh, and with with McDermott, you know I think they could uh, you know pull a rabbit out of their hat, so to speak. We'll see. Everybody in the NFL, please just stay healthy. 
<laughs> let's keep the let's keep the knee injuries, the AS, a, ACL tears to a minimum. Oh my gosh, um, we have a big fantasy football draft coming up in September. That's right. So I'd like as many running back options available as yeah. possible. That's that's one thing. Uh, I I had a few teams last year, and every single one was affected by injuries, and it sucked. It sucked. So hopefully this year. Uh, the, the healthy players are on my team for a change. That'd be helpful. Yeah, I'd like that too. Not to be <laughs> mis- not to be Mr. Fantasy Football Guy, um, but injuries really ruin it for everybody. Yeah. But anyway, uh, everybody, thanks for tuning in to the first uh, Citizens NFL podcast. Robert Harding, thanks for joining. Yeah. I think I kind of took over the hosting duties. Look at that. <laughs> I'm fine with it. <laughs> yeah. You could be the analyst for once, you know. Hey, Just bring, bring some bring some fancy stats next time, and yeah. then we'll really get talking. I'll bring some uh, whiskey too. We'll we'll, we'll really uh, do all the hot takes. Oh, save that for uh, NFL Sundays. Yeah. <laughs> all right, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed it, and uh, we'll hopefully be back be back soon. Yeah. Hopefully with Chris Shearer. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thanks. Have a good one. <laughs>